Welcome to this course. Today we're going to be discussing Reality Unbound, The Digital Mind and the Nature of Reality by E. Hughes. Is the mind digital? Is the existence of the mind or consciousness a cosmic accident or did nature design the first software program and central processing center in the human brain, thus designing intelligence and in organisms for a specific metaphysical, evolutionary, or cosmic purpose? Or was it random? Better, how does an organism evolve into an intelligent species that can observe, think, read, write, reason, adapt, create, deliberate, judge, calculate, or perceive, and for what cosmic purpose? Yeah, a lot of good questions. And questions that literally philosophers, people, ancient times, now have been asking. And honestly, we haven't had like a good answer, correct? Until more recently with the exploration and building up of the artificial intelligence, AI, we get a comparison. Ancient and modern philosophers have debated the nature of the mind and the nature of reality. Some have argued that only matter is real under the materialism school of philosophy, while others argue for idealism, which is a concept that only our perceptions can be real because you need a mind to perceive reality. Yeah, so I, I like how the author started from the beginning, right? Consciousness, what it is how the mind works, evolution, and how it seems that humans don't necessarily evolve, but our <laughs> minds are such that we can learn and process and adapt, evolve technically in that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's... Like we can't, like she uses examples of, we can't necessarily live in extreme weathered places like extreme cold or extreme hot because physically we're unable to because we don't have excess fur or blubber or mm -hmm. things like that like animals do. They evolve yeah. properly. But for us, we can't. We have to we, – we had a mind where we're like, oh, my God, we're cold. We need to create clothing or mm -hmm. housing. Shelter. Shelters, yeah. Fire. So we evolved in a, I think, in a different way in the mind. Yeah, the mind is the one that evolves and, I guess, upgrades every now and then. Because mm -hmm. evolution is when you're stuck in a place, like animals, the water dries up, you know, you can't swim somewhere. So you evolve to, like, the mud skippers, you know, to live both on land and water. Mm -hmm. And other animals, they evolve because they can't really go anywhere else. So they have to evolve and change their body or die yeah and that's it to be able to live under those conditions where right. for us we change the environment around us right we make stuff to live in the cold we make stuff to live in the heat we adapt and change things to our will and so then we're left with okay we have our consciousness our mind that makes us feel self-aware we are now self-aware so that means we're intelligent living beings i guess the comparison is to computers like ai in particular are they also conscious beings sentient beings are they aware that they were created and that they can do what they want or do they have to wait for a direction and for the human to interface with it and pretty much give it like a job like answer this question build me this picture right but it's artificial intelligence and the mm -hmm. word intelligence itself is like, are they self-aware? Right. And the author also goes deeper into that, like self-awareness. Humans have it. That's what we're aware of our environment, are able to adapt and change things. Where animals, they just need no. to survive, hunt, eat. Right. You know? And it also goes to that whole thought of the quote by, I think it's a, it's a philosopher, a French philosopher. I think, therefore I am. Right. <laughs> So AI, I mean, technically, they're thinking about all the information that we download into them, right? Like we're given, giving them the knowledge and, and the information, and they just kind of accumulate it and sift through it and regurgitate it when asked. But they still have to think about it. They, they still need to process do they stuff. Regurgitate. I, I know, I know, I know, see, I know. See, and that, that's another deep thing. It's like 
you're giving all this information to AI and it just puts it together, but yeah. it didn't experience those things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just like perception. We all have different perceptions. Like we see the same thing. I see a blue sky. You see a aqua. You see a whatever green sky. Right. And the author goes through that too. She describes our perception mm -hmm. as it's subjective, right? Re our reality is subjective. So we all kind of came together and agreed upon certain things like the sky being blue, you know? Yeah, that and a few other things where for AI, it's more objective. Consciousness is a state of mind. It is a form of mental awareness or alertness that coincides with the animation of matter that constitutes biological and mental aliveness. Owing to consciousness, humans are one of the only and few animals in the animal kingdom to adapt and evolve according to mental and social conditions, leaving humans with little inducement to evolve according to their physical surroundings. And so that goes back to what we were talking about. So yeah, kind just, of fit that in there. Somehow. Yeah, it fits it all together. And the, the few times that humans do evolve is through genetic mutations, which are not always pretty and sometimes they hurt. She also discusses language and intelligence, which actually that chapter, uh, at first I was kind of, I thought we were going to go into a lot of um, computer because she's, the author is mm. super intelligent. I mean, she's a metaphysicist for goodness sake. So I really was kind of worried for a second that the, it was going to be a lot of computer techie like verbiage, but she goes in to talk about how language doesn't necessarily equivalent to being intelligent right? Mm. Just because you have a language doesn't doesn't mean you're a smart person. You could have no language and still be very intelligent. I guess that's what humans would see them as, see themselves as the ultimate. Like, yeah, I mean, it's definitely helpful, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. it really allows for progress and progress. sharing of knowledge, keeping us all safe and alive is right, a good thing. Histories, communicate right. with each other, yeah. learn to communicate on other languages yeah. and see things differently uh, it's really important but as you said and as the author mentioned it doesn't correlate to intelligence right there are also areas of the brain that correlate to language that shuts down when the brain is focused on a task this area is called the default mode network dmn it is active when we are dreaming daydreaming or engaged in internal thought or internal speech and switches off when engaged in external activities requiring cognition. Yeah, DMN, I thought that was really interesting because it's pretty much daydreaming. A lot of people do it, you're in your internal thoughts, and that's what people you know, call zoning out. But I didn't see it as, as the author mentions, it's like a different part of your brain function that shuts off so it could focus on that internal dialogue and it kind of clouds everything else. But once you start conversating with some other person or focusing on a different task, it shuts off, which I don't know. I just found that really interesting just because of the dreaming phase, the daydreaming, the internal thoughts, which the author also goes into in the book. Like when we talk to each other, to ourselves and our mind, it's like a form of... Do you hear your voice? I hear my voice. Yes. Okay. And I know that that actually <laughs> not a lot of people do. And also, like, when they're reading, they can't actually visualize what they're reading or hear their voice. Isn't that crazy? Really? Yeah, I've heard of that. Oh, uh, she didn't really discuss that in the book, but I thought that was wild when I found that out. Anyways, good. Yeah. I don't know. It's just a lot of things that we take for granted that our body and mind is capable of. Mm -hmm. And just reading this book and all that. A lot of good resources. She did a ton of research. Uh, mentions a lot of authors and... Studies. Know, case studies and... Yeah, it's very well researched. And I, you know, I also love this goes into the next chapter of when she's discussing the human brain and how it's like a computer. I loved how she kind of mm. broke it down too. And it makes so much sense. She describes the motherboard as gray matter, but the processor as nerves or central nervous system, wiring the white matter, Network is the seven connected regions of the brain responsible for various brain functions. Software is the mind and the computer is the body. I feel like when I think of a computer, cause I'm not that super intelligent. I don't know much about computer science stuff, but when I think of a computer, I'm like, yeah, that's what I kind of imagine it to be. And that's like our brain. That's like our whole, our whole setup here. 
Isn't that crazy? It's wild. It's probably why we have electricity running through our body, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jeez. But again, yeah, check it out. A lot of research, a lot of articles, a lot of references. Really great work from the author. Thanks for hanging out with us, and be sure to check out Reality Unbound, The Digital Mind, and The Nature of Reality by E. Hughes. Mm -hmm.